everybody, Yom Tov, it's Monday and I want to welcome you to Around the Kitchen Table. Um, so I hope that you're all sitting comfortably with your cup of tea or cup of coffee or whatever it is you want to drink today. Um, I want to welcome all new people to the Haven. I really do hope you have fun here. I try and provide something for you every day, weekdays. Um, but honestly, as I say to you, as I've said to all the other Haveners, because when you subscribe, you can become a Havener. So I would ask you, as I ask of all the other Haveners, if there's anything that you want me to cover, any particular stories, whether it be a folk tale, um, you know, and mythology, a true crime, a particular scary story, um, if you want your cards read, your tarot done, you know, or anything that particular in particular that you'd like me to talk about um, on Mondays, then just let me know and I'm more than happy to do it for you. And as for the rest of you who have hung there in with me through thick and and bigger hello guys it's lovely to see all of you you know i've um i've taken this last two weeks more or less off because i needed that time and my gratitude to all of you for giving me that time i is overwhelming and i can't thank you enough um just a little bit about Lorraine today. A funeral is on Friday afternoon. Due to COVID, they're only having funerals so many at a time. Uh, there are only 18 people, family members, allowed to attend funerals and they've got to be keep the social distancing. Um, I can't send flowers because the family literally has nowhere to put them because a family didn't live locally to her. I mean, the nearest I think there were was something like 20 miles away. Um, so it's going to be hard for them to keep any flowers. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to buy a rose bush and I'm going to plant it in my garden in memory of her. And I want to tell you something, a weird story about um, a rose bush. Well, back in May, um, I think I've mentioned to you that I'd sent her um, like a special sort of roses package. It was um, a rose bush set into a little silver teapot. And there were biscuits and tea bags. You know, it was sort of like special tea bags and biscuits made of clotted cream um, and she'd said that she was thoroughly looking forward to tasting them because at the time her meds were playing hell with her taste buds but she was looking forward to when the meds calmed down and then she could try them. Well I didn't realise that she'd put the rose bush straight into our garden because she was obviously waiting for it to grow but she took a photograph of everything the day it came it arrived at her house and I looked at the rose bush and there were at least a dozen rose buds on it that were all the very palest pink but it looked really pretty and I thought oh she's going to get a whole head full of flowers that's really going to be that'll really make her smile well she planted them in a garden and then today our daughter took a photograph of the rose bush and there were only three roses had, had stayed. All the rest had died off but these three beautiful roses and I thought they were going to be pink. There were, it was like white with a hint of pink but like this beautiful creamy white 
and they look absolutely outstanding. And our daughter said, look, there's you and Jan and mum. And I just thought, I, I just wondered, is that a message? You know? And um, as you can see, it, it really made me smile. It really cheered me up. Um, so I've taken that as a message. That, you know, she could have had a head full of roses. But only three have come up. Um, and we were the three sisters. So I'm taking that as we're still the three sisters. Even though she's physically not here anymore. So I've I've taken that as a great sign, very positive sign from her. So um, I love you, Lorraine, and thank you. I'll always love you. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you like the new intro and outro. Um, as you can see. Elle has done another outstanding job and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Uh, I didn't expect her to have it with me so quickly. Um, I mean, when you think about it, I only emailed her a fortnight ago and um, I didn't think that she would get it to me so fast. Um, but, I, you know, I'm very, very grateful to her. Um, she's doing fine. Um, she's just doing her own thing at the moment. Um, so, anyway, I think the new intro and outro is a lot more appropriate. I mean, the first one that we had, yes, I was thrilled. But there's a much more at-home feel with this new intro, I think. Um, and it actually shows off my kitchen table quite well although I do have to say I would never have that much milk in my tea and I certainly wouldn't have flowers floating in it but she used what she could get so that's fine you know if I'm going to have a flower tea I'll have it like with plain boiled water you know just in case anybody's thinking my god she has a lot of milk in her tea doesn't she um I don't know whether you've noticed but I think over the past year and a half I've actually slowed down. Um, one of our haveners sent me um, a message and he's watched one of my old ones from last March. And last March I seemed to be yakking away at 90 to the dozen. And then I've noticed recently that I've really started to slow down. Um, I don't know why that is, to be quite honest with you. I don't know whether I've just filmed at times where I've felt a very low battery or what. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I'm going to try and, and get that vibe back. Um, I've got to be honest with you. This, this past year and a half, I have spent as much time with Lorraine as I could. And... You know, it didn't end up the way I hoped it would. But that's just life, isn't it? The things that we hope for, sometimes we get them and sometimes we don't. And this is, I come back to this, is, I think it's the universe saying that we'll give you what you need. Not what you want. And one thing I remember needing for her was that she didn't have to feel any more pain. Well, of course, now she doesn't. She is healthy again. She's happy. You know? And she didn't want to go. And over a fact, she didn't want to go. And being given the news that she was given, pulled the rug out from underneath her. And it, ju it just takes me back to things that happen in life. Things happen to us that literally pull the rug out from underneath us. 
and we just we're left on the spot and we don't know what to do you know um and how do we cope when the rug is pulled out from underneath us and i think it all depends on the situation and how you are as a person and how you feel your priorities are at any given time and you've got to remember as i keep reminding myself that there are certain things in this life that we have to deal with that cause so much stress you know um the top one that we have to deal with is a death then a divorce or you know any kind of relationship breakup then you've got a house move and then you've got loss of a job long term illness you know sometimes you get a diagnosis of an illness that will literally pull the rug out from underneath your feet. Um, the only one that I can actually think of that comes under that category has got to be cancer. Because I think anybody who gets a diagnosis of cancer, they automatically look on that as a death sentence. But some people will take it and have their moment and then think, sod it, I'm going to fight this. And they throw them whole selves into it. And some of them win the battle and some of them don't. Or, let's put it this way, they win a whole load of battles, but they don't win the war. And it can be like that with relationships as well, I think. When I look back at my first marriage... My God, there were a whole load of battles. And I mean, there really were. Especially in the last two to five years, I would say. Neither of us won the war. My biggest win was the children, obviously. I lost everything else. He was more concerned about the everything else. But I didn't mind starting from nothing. I'd had nothing before. Now I had two children and I had to start with nothing. But they've always been brilliant. And for a long time it was just the three of us. And... Yes, I'm remarried now, and yes, I'm happy. But there's still that kind of element of the three of us. I think that'll always be there. And I don't know if this is probably just me, or if any of you feel like this, but you can be happily married, right? And you've, you've got this great love between you and your partner. But when you have a child, and I can only speak from being a mum, right? The love that you've got for your child or children sort of just knocks everything else into a cocked hat, I think. I mean... I do love Bill and he loves me but he likes his space as well he likes being having hours on his own so for all he wants family time at weekends what he basically means is is that he wants me to be there for him when he comes out of having his alone time and everything's about give and take and compromise and be flexible and 
and you know he has work all week or he doesn't really see me but I've spent I spent so much time on my own with the kids that I'm not necessarily worried you know because when he goes to bed, the kids come out of the rooms and we all sit around and we all sit and chat for hours. Well, we sit and chat for hours as well when he's not in. So, but it's 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 weird. I, I don't know whether I'm just talking at tangents. I think I tend to do that, to be honest with you. And I haven't looked at the clock again when I started talking to you. I think I've been talking to you for about a quarter of an hour or something. Um... But I don't, I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want to yak for too long. But I'll, I'm going to try and bring myself back to my, my original point. Which I'm trying to remember what it was now. Yeah, the universe gives us what we need, not what we want. Somebody once said to me, God only gives you as much as you can carry. Mm, I would disagree with that. I think an awful lot of us have been given burdens so hard it's almost broken us. And unfortunately some people have broken underneath the burden. It's been too much for them mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. But they're not weak people. But sometimes you can ask too much of someone. And they've either got to bend or break. And I think that's what happened in my first marriage. Neither of us were pre were going, in the end, neither of us were prepared to bend enough, so we broke. But in this one, at least, I'm willing to bend, because this marriage is an entirely different kettle of fish. You know, Bill isn't him. The other one, the ex, he's not him. And I know he genuinely loves me, he tells me. Not something that the other one would do. Unless that he was pushed. Um, I think sometimes... Hmm, I think sometimes we are given things to do in this life. That we might not like at the time. And one might think, why me? But looking at it from a different standpoint, why not me? Because there's something in me that can handle the situation. That I can find a way of dealing with it. And... Yeah, I've had a fair bit to deal with in my life. But it's nothing compared to what some have had to endure. Not by a long shot. So I'm incredibly grateful for what I have. And trust me, I thank whether it's God, whether it's spirit, whether it's the universal energies, whether it's the source of all it is, whether it's just all that and more. I don't know. But I do thank... Well, for one, like up there, wherever up there is. I thank the source that all it is of... I, I thank this... I, you know, there I go, mixing up my words. It's never going to happen. It's, I'm never going to get through a video where I, I'll talk complete sense in a sentence. I'm not going to give up though. I'm going to keep trying. 
I make sure I thank the source of all that is for everything that I'm blessed with. And, you know, even if you haven't got much, compared to somebody else, you're going to be wealthy. You know, I look, I mean, I wish I could do more for the homeless. I haven't seen Jimmy in months. You remember Jimmy, the homeless guy? I've asked, nobody seems to know where he is. And the last time I saw him, he'd been badly beaten up and he'd been robbed. He just managed to get all his money together for two nights in his accommodation. And um, he'd wrapped up his blanket and his sleeping bag. And he left the place at the supermarket where he, he'd been begging. And um, apparently he was jumped on. And then I saw him the week after and he told me that it happened and his face was still all cut up. He was still bruised. And I said to him, how have you done today? And he went, oh, as he called me flower. Oh, not very well flower. He says, um, I need another tenner to get my, my bed for the night, or at least the next two nights, he says, and uh, it doesn't look I'm going to make it. And I gave it to him. Now, I'm not telling you this because I'm an angel or a goody two-shoes or anything like that. I had the money in my purse. And I, all I could think of was, because it was still cold back then, and they're not allowing anybody to beg outside the supermarkets now, not with the, the COVID. But this was well before the COVID started. And I told him, because it was daylight, I said, go now, go and pay for your two nights in the bed now. And... He did. I said, I'm going to follow you up the road. I'm going to make sure you go. And he said, listen, Flower, he says, have you got a couple of quakes so I can get some fags? He didn't have any cigarettes. I says, oh, go on. So I gave him, I, I had enough coins in my purse to give him. I said, go on. He says, you don't have enough for a beer, do you? I went, no, I don't. You'll have to beg or borrow or whatever but no I don't I said I've literally I haven't got enough to buy you a beer I said get up there and you can make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee I said you're a cheeky bugger you and he just reached in and he hugged me and he said e I must stink and I said well I've smelled worse I says go and get yourself a shower and have two good nights in bed. And that was the last week I saw him. And then the next week I put a whole load of jumpers and things in a bag for him, a couple of pairs of pants. And um, he wasn't there. A week after he wasn't there. Nobody's seen him in months. So... He wouldn't have gone begging anywhere else because that was his spot. And when I first got to know him, he'd not been long out of prison. So the only thing I can think of is he's either in prison or there's the alternative. 
which I don't want to think about. Because if, if he'd just been given a chance, I know he, would, he, he was dying to get a job and he wanted to get a roof over his head. But because he didn't have a roof over his head, he couldn't get a job. And without a job, you can't get a roof over your head. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a vicious circle. And it's the homeless I feel for. And I'll be quite honest with you, if I came into the lottery, I'd be doing what I could to, you know, you know what I would do? I would buy up all the crappy properties, you know, the kind that have the windows boarded up and things like that, you know, and I'd buy up all those properties and I'd get the local homeless people in and get them, I'd, I'd supply all the tools and I'd get them to go in and start with a couple of tradesmen and start them working on their new homes and then hand them over to them and then sub them until they got a job. And then they could pay their own rent and I'd set them a peppercorn rent or something like that. Something to give them a bit of pride. That's what I would do. I might not be able to help very many people. But that's something I would definitely do. You know, I would rather do that than give to charity. Where they've got... Oh, they've got that admin costs and they've got this, these costs and that cost. You know, the money should be going straight to the people who need it. Or like straight to the animals that need it, you know. Not um, celebrities and these CEOs who need a ton of money to keep them in the job, no. No, <clears throat> that's all these, um, oh, I've got this person who lives locally has got a motorbike and he keeps going up and down and up and down and it's like a cheese grater on my brain um yeah that's what i would do if i had that kind of money i would buy up all these raggedy backside oh, places and um, stick the homeless in them. You know, get them some nice clothes so they could go for interviews and get their pride back. It's a dream, and it would it is definitely something I would I would love to do that. You know, but you never know, one of these days I might mention it to somebody who has got a ton of money and they might decide that they can use their money and they can do it. And then I can sit and applaud them. Because I think, you know, if you're going to have money and if you want it to do and like make change and make a difference, that's something that you could do. You know, help people get that pride back and pride in themselves so that they don't feel alone and they don't feel as if they don't matter. You know, because we all matter. We all, we're all important. I mean, I know you lot tell me off for saying that I'm not, but I keep telling myself I'm important you know I know I'm important to my family you know and my friends but the, I think the point is that we are all worthy 
none of us are worthless. I was brought up to feel worthless and it's taken years, absolute years to convince me that I am worth something. And everyone deserves love. I mean, we, we do, we just, we deserve love. We deserve to feel worthy. We deserve to feel important. And I don't mean like in a bragging kind of way, you know? It's just to have that smile on your face, that sense of pride that, do you know what? If I put my mind to it, I could achieve big things today. I would like to do that. You know, for someone. I know Jimmy once said, and I was blushing like a, oh, I don't know, when he told me that because I'd hugged him, I made him feel like he was a person. that I made him feel important. And I felt awful. Because he'd lost his mother. And he said I was the first person to hug him since his mother had died. Nobody would hug him because he smelled so bad. And he did. He smelled really bad. But it didn't matter to me. And I think it's important to let people know that they matter. See, I know you lot would find it hard to believe because I haven't met any of you. But you do matter to me. And you're important to me. And I do care about what happens to you. And I've had people come and comment to me in the last couple of weeks who I've actually never spoken to before. Who have shown me kindness and they made me felt like I mattered, like my grief mattered. And that Lorraine mattered. Someone they'd never met, never clapped eyes on. So I think that's my talk around the kitchen table today. Oh, that biker, oh my goodness. I hope you can barely hear him. So, anyway. Oh, I think I've been talking to you longer than half an hour now. Would you please let me know what you think of the new intro and outro? And if there's anything that you want me to cover, just let me know. And I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'm going to see you again very, very soon. So I love you all. And I'm going to say bye-bye to you for now. Please take care of yourselves. Stay safe wherever you are. And bye for now.